Welcome to Business Connection. I'm Liz Spencer. Joining me now is Patty Midland from Go Girl Communication. Hi. Welcome, Patty. Nice Thanks. to see you. Great to be here. So Tell me exactly what Go Girl Communication is. I, I love the title. I love the name. Oh, thanks. Thanks. It's um, We are a branding and content company. And okay. so we help companies, big and small, discover what their brand story is, but then share that story in a way that really resonates with their audience. And I always like to, I mean, obviously creating and discovering your brand story is where it starts, mm -hmm. but it's really in the sharing that I think... Um, moves companies from good to great because there are so many communication channels out there and if you do not know how to use them effectively you could create the greatest content in the world and it's not going to do anything for you totally agree and i think people struggle with knowing um about their story and so and, and knowing how to tell it so and why it's important because they just think oh it's just my story nobody's going to be interested so so why is it so important <laughs> To know your story. That is something we hear so many times. Yeah. Like, I have nothing interesting. Yeah. And I, the reason I love the brand story is because I think it's this little tiny narrative that brings together the why, so that reason that you created your business to begin with, and your what. What is it that you exactly do? And you bring those two things together in this beautiful story that really, um, it's not only is clear and concise, but it's compelling. So it gets people to not only know, okay, this is what your business does, but it tells them why they should care about what your business does. And I know people think, oh, the brand story, I'll get to that later. But your brand story, if you do it and you pay attention to it, it really helps you clearly communicate outside, externally. But it helps you also internally. Like if you're trying to recruit or retain top talent, and right now I think everybody's trying to mm -hmm. recruit and retain top yeah, talent, yeah. If you have a really great brand story that you can tell people and they can really get a feel for who you are as an organization, that's going to help you there. And it's also going to help you when you start to look at where you should grow. So if you are thinking of scaling your business, knowing your brand story, you need to kind of solidify that because you can look at your brand story and then compare all the options. So should we go into a new market? Should we launch a new product? Look at your options and look at your brand story and do they align? because that's gonna show you where you should make your next step that's really gonna stay at the heart of who your company is. So lots of um, entrepreneurs, you know, large or small, struggle with this. What would be you know, three, thing, three things every entrepreneur should, should know or, or create, know about when they're creating their brand? What are the three points there? They should first know their why. So and it, I know that people say that all the time, but it's true. So know why you're doing what you're doing, why you exist in the world. Um, you should know your audience. So mm -hmm. pay attention and not just the demographics because everyone's like, of course I know my audience. It's 18 to 35. And Okay, know a little bit more. Like know, uh, go a little deeper into their lifestyle. What is the? What are their challenges? What are the problems that they're facing that maybe your company could solve? Um, and then the third one is... Um, know yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that seems crazy, but you really do need to be authentic to who you are. And even if you're creating a brand that you want to be sustainable with or without you as a physical presence in it, you still need to bring your authentic self to the table. And when you don't do that, people are going to notice. I, I think that's the biggest mistake I have seen is where people create really beautifully crafted brand stories. And that's really who they want to be, but that isn't really who they are. And somewhere down the line, whether it's a social media post or a presentation they're giving, people are going to see the cracks in that armor. So be true to who you are. Yeah, well, it kind of reminds me of the actress who does a really phenomenal headshot and then shows up and they don't look like they're headshot. Right. 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 Or you go to a conference and that happens. Yeah, so the it's, speaker it's, it's, comes it's, out yeah, and you're yeah. like, hmm, hmm, that's interesting. Who are you? <laughs> right. And you, you make it sound... Um, easy, but really doing a brand strategy um, is a little bit of uh, really taking a deep dive into who you are. It's a little bit of come, come to the top of the mountain moment. It is. And that's why I think that authentic, that authenticity part gets, people kind of want to throw that down. Uh, you're like, right, let's just it, not pay attention to that. Because it's very personal. Because it's very personal. And it's really hard to kind of look yourself in the mirror as a brand and say, you know, here's my good, my bad, my ugly. Mm -hmm. And, but you have to do that in order to create a brand story that's really going to work and really going to resonate with your audience. People want you to be true to who you are. 
Well, and I think stories are everywhere and people, and I think businesses should have stories because businesses are made up of people. So we have stories and nice. they, they, people are like, it's just business. It's, it's not, no. no, it's never just business. And every, even in your, your business, you have a beginning, a middle and an end. Mm -hmm. Like you know, go back to storytelling 101, mm -hmm. you know, you have a beginning. So it, start there with your brand story. Start, okay, when did I start? What's the beginning? And most people I will say go from the beginning, here's where I started and here's where I am now. Okay. They leave out that middle part. Sure, it's like junior high. Yes. Oh, I'm happy. Let's, right. <laughs> right. Those are the ugly Let's years. Let's just forget about those ugly junior high years. <laughs> but those ugly junior high years are really where all the meat is. Yeah. So if you spend some time really digging into that with your company, that's the stuff that's going to give you a great brand story. Now, it's go girl communication. So I, I get the idea that you might be specializing in, in something. Yeah. Maybe like female entrepreneurs? I think so. What you, <laughs> yes. So, so uh, what are some differences that you've noticed and why did you focus? Yeah, for sure. Um, and we do work with men. I don't want to, like, we're not men haters. I'm married <laughs> to one. I'm raising two of them. I love them. Um, but we do tend to gravitate towards female entrepreneurs. And these are very generalizations, I know. I mean, I know there are female entrepreneurs that aren't going to fall into this category and men that do. But what I find is that women tend to be more collaborative uh, especially from the get-go. They're very good about saying like, okay, here's what I know and here's what I don't and here's where I need help. They want to be very inclusive and collaborative from the beginning. Um, the second thing is that women entrepreneurs tend to, they tend to look for the greater good. So they start, they usually start their companies because they're solving a problem they see, whether that's a problem that they've faced or a problem they just see in the world. They really are looking to create a company or a brand that is not that is going to do good in this world. It's going to make people's lives better. And we always just love to be a part of all of that. And I think for the third one, and this is going to sound negative when I say it, but it's not. But female entrepreneurs tend to not feel very entrepreneurially. Mm -hmm. That's not even a word. That's <laughs> from your content person. <laughs> yeah. But they tend to not feel like they're really part of that entrepreneur network. Even though women entrepreneurs are growing at a faster rate than men, mm -hmm. they still feel like they're outside of this network. And so we, at Go Girl, one of the things that we're just so passionate about is not only helping people create content and branding, but if you are a female entrepreneur, we want you to feel very good about being an entrepreneur. We want to you to feel at ease of what you're doing, feel very valued in what you're doing, and connect you, help you start to build that network so you feel like you have that support. Excellent. So Go Girl recently celebrated its 10th anniversary. Yes. So congratulations. Thank That's you. awesome. So, so thinking as part of your story, you know, what, you know, what did you, what did you think when you got you began? Yeah. And what are some of the lessons learned now? What might you give somebody else? Or what might you tell your younger self to do differently? Um, it seems like a whole different new segment. Um, uh. But I think the things that I've learned the most and what I wish I would have known in the beginning is first and foremost, you are your company's chief sales and marketing officer. Mm -hmm. And if you are not comfortable in the sales and marketing space, you need to find out how to get comfortable in that space because it is, you are going to have to sell and promote your business. Even if that's not your thing, you're going to have to do that. Um, the second thing is find a tribe of, um, for me, it's women, but you can find a tribe of whoever yeah. to really support you. And I don't mean just the friends that are like, yeah, you're awesome. You're so good. Yeah. I mean like this really good support system that will hold you accountable, will kind of push you out of your comfort zone, but they also are your biggest cheerleaders. Um, and then my other thing that really surprised me, and I think I did it accidentally, but you should be thinking about the culture of your company the minute you decide to start it. And it seems crazy because if you're like me, you were sitting at a table by yourself with your dog and you were creating a company and to create a culture seemed nuts. But I had in my head that I wanted to create a company where I wanted to work. So I took all the best parts of all the companies where I worked and I put them all together into this company. And even though I worked by myself for nine years, <laughs> when I made those first hires, I knew so much. It was so, um, it was just such much of a part of me what the culture was going to be that I was able to make strong hires. So I could hire pe two people that not only could do the tasks that I needed, but were so much a part of who the culture was that they were able to start building that really strong foundation. And I think that, I am so glad that I did that by accident in the beginning, mm -hmm. because I think you need to really be thinking about your culture from the beginning. Well, that's awesome. Well, we, um, 
congratulate you on 10, 10 great years and look forward to 10 great more years for you with GoGo Communications. So thanks for stopping thanks. by and sharing a little bit of your story with us. Yes. And we look forward to seeing all your success. Thank you very much. We'll be right back with more Business Connections. Stay tuned.